I'm so sorry to the Drag Race audience for having to witness such a goblin. I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture. And I'm Nick Valdez from Conflict.com. And this is Pop Culture Social Call, where we go in on everything RuPaul's Drag Race because we have the mother of all balls to talk about today. Yes, that's right. We're going in on episode three of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race, and we are finally bringing these queens together. Nick, right off the bat, what did you think about bringing all the girlies together and, and watching them fight? <laughs> Instantly, they were just going at each other, just immediately, which is something we appreciate here. <laughs> we love a villain here, you and I do. And so this week's Untucked, like... Plain Jane versus a mandatory meeting and plasma. <laughs> Both of them kind of ate her up. Like, I I stand this group and I am really looking forward to watching them. And we also had this fabulous ball, the mother of all balls. And, and you know, I love the ball. It's one of my favorite challenges every season. And I love it when they have it early on. So we get like a million looks. But also as someone who recaps the show, I'm like, oh my God, we have a million looks. So let's just dive in uh, to all of the looks that we have to unpack. We had three categories for this ball. The first was a mother goose, um, which you and I talked about. It's a very loose interpretation because I have no idea who has these characters. Yeah, some of those characters, I have no idea where they come from. <laughs> They're <laughs> from their brains. They're, they aren't yeah. fake. <laughs> then the second category, we've got significant mother, famous mothers. Uh, and then the last one, which is the look that the queens had to make, in the workroom was Call Me Mother, Father Eleganza, where they used menswear, and I hated every material that they had to work with. <laughs> but let's see how the girls do. Let's go in. Let's start off with Geneva Carr, vroom vroom. She comes out in this Miss Muffet, like little puffer jacket, spider moment. Um, I thought it was cute. I didn't think it was like overwhelming in any way. I thought it was just too cumbersome. And then her Salma Hayek look for uh, significant mothers. Um, it was cute, but that's, I didn't read that as Salma Hayek like at all. <laughs> yeah, same here, you know, cause that's the thing. Salma Hayek is great, but also there are like iconic movie looks she could have yeah. drawn from or something. And this was a pretty look. She looked pretty. But yes, also agree that I wasn't reading Salva yeah. Hyde. Yeah, who was that woman? Um, and then this, <laughs> this cute little blue bodysuit that she made for uh, the making, the sewing challenge. Um, meh, you know, I didn't, it's not like atrocious, not falling off her body, but it's nothing special. I know, and I know they read her for like using like stretchable wear, but at the same time, she is the only one who ultimately used like that blue. <laughs> So like yes. when we're looking at the rest of the outfits, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, stretchable wear is fine because she had a different color. <laughs> on the other side, we've got Dawn who went full on with everything. We'll get to her maid look in a moment, but we started off with um with Cushy Cow for Mother Goose, who is a character that I do not know if exists uh, again, but I <laughs> love the mug. I love the hooves, the little ear tag. I thought this was really well done. I liked it too, but this also just kind of feels like Dawn. I was just kind of getting the, oh, you do this all the time kind of look, and it's fine, but also, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Next up for her significant mother look, she was Audrey Hepburn, and this was a very, like, simple look, but I thought it was very well executed. I thought the makeup looked really good with it. And I love the little brooch at the neck. I thought it was really elegant. I thought it was cool. Like it was just yeah. the little bits of Dawn flair that she added to the look, like the the little flesh windows mm -hmm. and like the just Dawn's eye makeup already is kind of cool. But then yeah. like, compared with the rest of the Audrey look, it just kind of made it, it new and kind of freshened it up a bit. Now, on the other hand, her look look uh, for the mother father eleganza was just kind of everything for me and I don't mean that in a good way I mean I think she took like a little bit of everything and like stitched it together it was giving uh the Shea Coulee construction outfit but not as good <laughs> right yeah like the boots were very like this is very Final Fantasy video yeah. gamey RPG kind of character and like it 
I think as a, that kind of concept, it works because I don't know. I'm stuck on those boots. I really like them. Yeah. I, I like the, I like <laughs> the cool. idea of the, yeah, I like the idea of the strap going all the way to the shoulder. That's a fun idea, but yeah, uh, it's just, yeah. When we see some of the other looks later on, it's like, oh, this is fine. We're, we're getting a lot of fine. <laughs> I know. Again, it's, I don't really like the materials that they have to work with. So it might not be these girls' fault. But again, I'm like, next. Hershey Lacour Jeté, who comes out as Birdie B, another made up character. But she looks so beautiful. Uh, I didn't love the wig, but I love this B look. And I thought her little shawl was very elegant. I thought this was cute. Same here. Latex is obviously her thing, or the, the yeah. leathery look. And, you know, it's much better than the <laughs> that her mother earth look that she comes oh. out next for the <laughs> for the famous mother look and yeah like when you compare the two fits it's like no the b was the much better of the two her she had unfortunately you know we will get to that later but we had she had a bad runway in general as coming out with her maid look was um for just the moment I thought she made those pants, I was like, oh, and then and I was like, wait a minute, where is she going to get sea foam, right? <laughs> yeah, like, where did that come from? Where is the sea foam coming from? And if she made them, why don't they fit? It, yeah. it was a mess. That is, that's like a woman after a long day at work going to the mall, you know? And right. I, I really didn't like it. Next up, though, we've got Mirage, who I thought did a pretty good job. I, I've, I've kind of come around on her. So first off, we, she came out as Baba Bob Black Sheep. She gets points for being a character that is real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the ears are cute, but I was like, I feel like you already owned this and you just kind of pulled it out of your closet. What'd you think? Yeah, it was like a like a Halloween outfit, right? Like she just kind yeah. of like, she'll, she'll get the ears and put them on, on the already yes. look. But at the same time, I don't know, maybe it's just my Mirage bias coming in, I but I liked it. She looked cute. Like, and the same thing for her, her famous mother look, which was the, like, the La Llorona, which is a super cool idea. You know, don't, please don't go look up the legend. It's, yeah, she, oh, like, drowns yeah. her, she, she drowns <laughs> her kids and stuff. It's wild. Yes. I, I kind of wish the, the nude was more nuding. I don't know if that's proper to say either, but, like, no. maybe more of, like, the hair kind of design, like, kind of spread out. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, something wasn't completely clicking, but once again, she looked cute. Where I really turned around was her mother-father look. At first she put together these like scraps of sweater and she came out and I was like, girl, what is this? Like, this is safety pin, this is nothing. But the more I look at it, the more I like, I kind of love it. I don't know. Right? Maybe it's my see, mirage bias. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. Like if she kind of leaned into the wasteland Mad Max of yeah. it, you know, and just kind of steered further into, I don't know, maybe throw some pouches on there or like yeah. kind of sh like shred it up a bit or dirty it up, you know, like, like she just kind of did the eye makeup and was like, oh, I'm a boxer in the military, which is cool. But also, yeah, like I really wish she went towards the Thunderdome of it and just kind of really yeah. embraced the fact that, yeah, it was just kind of a green shredded thing she was wearing. But I don't know, more post-apocalyptic, I feel like she would have sold it because it's not yeah. that bad on her. Maybe it's because it's her. <laughs> Even though it was a little minimalistic and, and next up we have Megami who went like too maximalistic for me, especially with this little Bo Peep character. Yes. Oof. I, I, I mean, oof. yeah, little Bo Peep on the streets. Once again, I dig the concept. It's Megami, yeah. it's clearly, she's got that cosplayer brain and she, she knows what she's doing in terms of turning a look. But mm -hmm. it's the it's the execution that I kind of have an issue with. That's exactly how I feel about her Gaga look too. Her significant mother look was Lady Gaga in the telephone video, iconic look. But if you're gonna do a look that's so iconic, you have to kind of do it justice. And this just yeah. didn't really look like it was put together very well. But her third look, I I liked it. I, I like the Rosie the Riveter idea. I I, I like the the skirt. Uh, I think. I think what hurts it is the fact that it's not, I don't know, like maybe it's because it's denim. It doesn't feel like it fits super well. I, yes. I, it's just, yeah, it's something that maybe it could have been tightened a little more to really hit home. But I, I don't know. What did you think? 
I am so glad that Megami has an, an ally on the show because <laughs> I really didn't like this either. I think like all three were a miss for me. And I get that this was like, it was on her body. There was a concept, which I appreciate. And again, maybe it's my bias. I really don't love like a long, big denim skirt. Um, but yeah, I didn't like this either. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any reasoning no, behind it. I didn't like it. But that's that's totally fair because then after that we we get a mandatory meeting, which I'm sure we could both agree on. Who then again I say that, but I'm sitting here loving the chaos of her first look of the little cat and like uh, once again a character. I'm like I don't think that's a character. Yes. <laughs> Not in the slightest. But her her cat shawl was so funny, and I know this a line little like mod number was too short but i'm like is it funny that it's too short i, I maybe it's my mandatory meeting bias i like her yeah, too it's kind of like with mirage too right where it's like it looks it looks good on you like <laughs> yeah it was funny and i think like the the catch-all added humor to it so i was like i don't know maybe the dress can like come up to your navel i, I don't know her uh, mother look, which was Michelle yeah. Visage. She had the two, uh, she had the two Michelle eras, you know, the OG yes. era. And then her reduction reveal. reveal. <laughs> yes, which was like, oh, and then you get the smaller wig reveal of like, oh, I actually had some gray under here. And it's like, I, I don't know. I really like this look. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> the only note I, I took on her last look was, man, I, I really don't like this. The wig is a crime. So I don't really remember what it looked like, but I did not like it. What, what did you think about it? I mean, I'm glad her makeup has improved. I will <laughs> say that. At least she's not painting her face completely. I think maybe she's going to avoid that from now on. I don't know. I'm a little torn because I do love that chaotic energy that she has. Like, there's something yeah. about her that I'm drawn to. I like I'm drawn to this mess. Oh, I need her to stick around. She needs to be here forever. But yeah. Then we have Morphine Love Dion, who mm -hmm. uh, comes out in a man and a maid, which once again, never heard of it. I'm I, I'm hoping that these are real nursery rhymes that we've never heard of or Mother Goose stories and I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I do love the, the latex maid look. I can't lie. It's a concept. She looks great. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's what I wrote. She looks hot, but I, is this Mother Goose? I don't know. Whatever. Um, what do you think about Kris Jenner? Because I thought she really looked great, but I wish I wish she'd just gone straight Kris Jenner and just like really embraced the reality of it because she could really pull off like the duplicate. Yeah, I, I really wish she just went full pantsuit, uh, just yeah. like stylized a little bit. Her mother, father, look i what she i mean even during the runway she's like i don't really know what was going on here uh her corset came up too high there was a weird little train she was wearing a witch's hat which was like well constructed but didn't go with anything else i don't know yeah i, I wish she had the witch idea before like making the rest of the outfit i feel like yeah. a denim witch look would have been cool it was just not great <laughs> yeah no i yeah Messy. And speaking of messy, we've got Maya on the page who comes out as Mary's Canary again. Boo. Um, and I love this color on her. I love the dress, but the feathers covered her whole face. We couldn't even see it once she moved her hand away. I, I was yeah. like, that's a wild detail to miss. Yeah, and her significant mother look, Little Kim, it, it wasn't reading completely like Little Kim. Uh, you know, Little Kim has some bold looks, and I kind of wish she went with one of the more bold looks for yeah. Drag Race, but I, it's not that I hate this look either. I, you know, and <laughs> I don't know. I, it was okay. The boots made her look like her ankles were like saggy, um, which was weird. And again, didn't read, like, how do you not do the purple pasty look? That's yeah, like, that that's, reads yeah. Lil' Kim. Um, so I thought that was a bad choice. They didn't like her plaid rocker chick mother father look. And I kind of did like it. I don't know. They said it looked very like mall, but look what you gave these girls to make stuff out of. I thought it was yeah. fine. Yeah, and at the same time, what's wrong with the mall? I don't know. Maybe it's the, the 2000s in yeah. me and that's like looking at it going, you know what? The 2000s are coming back. It's tough too, because when you're followed up by Q, who, you know, is one of the seamstresses of the season and Q comes out in the Man in the Moon look, which is... Uh, 
I, I loved it. I can't lie. <laughs> oh, this was beautiful. This was like a Mother Goose illustration. This was like a medieval illustration. It was so ornate and beautiful. I love that it was like kind of androgynous too. Yeah. And I can't believe that she made this. this I mean, she's so, so talented. And, and her Judy Garland look was really beautiful too. Like this was a perfect recreation of that dress. I thought that was a good choice for her. Yeah, mother, just mother. Like mother. she came out, it was like, oh, mother. <laughs> yeah, mother is mothering. And mother continued to mother in this like Vivian Westwood plaid look. See, this is where when I'm complaining about the materials being like, well, what could they even expect them to do? This, this is what they could expect them to do. This was fantastic. <laughs> I loved this. Q is clearly a contender. I really enjoyed all three of these looks. And if it wasn't for the person who followed her, she might have won. <laughs> I know, I know. Nymphia Wind comes out on the runway first in this little boy blue look that honestly looked like it could be in like the same storybook as the uh, as the man on the moon. I loved yeah. it. It was so luxurious. The shoes were cool. Again, it was like playing with androgyny in a way that I really enjoyed. I, I thought that was fantastic. Oh, she looks so good. I, I, yeah. I that's the th I'm just like, oh, she looks great. Yeah, her significant mother look, I wasn't really feeling as well. You know, it was the Angelina Jolie wedding dress. I yeah. didn't quite get that completely. But that <laughs> final look, that made look. She comes out looking like a couture model. Cannot believe she made this in the same time that Geneva Carr made that little blue bodysuit. Oh so my sorry. God, I know. <laughs> and that's when it really hits, right? It's just like, oh my God, you were able to pull this off. And like, it, it just, that's how you use muted colors, everybody. It just yeah. looked incredible. She She's kind of like, I, I don't know. Like, if that's not going to bring her to, like, the top three, at least, uh, just on one look alone, I don't know what will. But yeah. uh, she does have some competition, though. You have Sophia yes. Cristal, who comes out next. And, you know, her, all three of her looks, I really enjoy, too. Uh, the Peter Pumpkin Eater, I, I love the theatrical giant pumpkin look. I love that it was yes. kind of painted kind of cartoonishly, so it popped just a little more. And uh, she she looked great. She looked great. Her Eve look for her significant mother, something I, I really like the braids, very cool, but something about the yes. proportions of the nude bodysuit were like off. It made her look very like bulky. I think she that Safira needs to kind of focus more on her proportions because she's got very broad shoulders and I think she doesn't always like work with them. With yeah, the breastplate was... and with the this. Yeah, it was the same problem Mirage had, where I wish the nude was more mm -hmm. nuding. But the floor yes. like braid, we definitely need more of those. That, that's a that's a, such a cool idea. Her final look, which was she said it was like Bob the Builder inspired, and you know, uh, so I know your thing about denim skirts, but uh, here here I do have to agree. It didn't feel finished. I know it's like yeah. a, a ruffled number, but it it didn't feel complete to me. Yeah, I I don't like I don't like the denim skirt, you know? Sorry, Sapphira. It's it's well made, I don't know. Let's move on to Plain Jane before I just rail against denim skirts for another five minutes. Um, She comes out <laughs> as Pussycat by the fire, whatever. She's a glamorous cat and I don't like these colors together. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it was a gown that she had and she painted a cat nose on, which was great. It's the same with her, her Octomom look, which, that's the thing. If you're going to do Octomom, you kind of don't do like a sparkly hospital gown. I, I, I felt kind of let down about it. You know? <laughs> the baby shawl was funny, but like, where's the big belly? And like, yeah. how dare you come for Amanda after this presentation? Yes. Like, yes. Especially it's... her main outfit. She comes out, she, she deconstructed a suit. It looks bad. And the tights are not the same color as her torso. I woof. I don't know. Not good. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that she said it as a brag that I only used a single suit for this. And it's like, oh, maybe you should have had some more materials. <laughs> Honey, we can tell. Now, Tsunami News comes out next as this very glamorous Humpty Dumpty. And I'm like, this should have been in the reveal because I loved yes. when she broke into this like hot little yoke. I thought this was very like funny and like cute. Yeah, Sexy Egg was great. I loved it. Then the Humpty Dumpty look was great too. Like we only got to see mm -hmm. it for a little bit, but it was just what we needed. It was fun and campy and I loved it. And her second look was just Candy Muse's denim look, which was yeah. paying tribute to her own mother. 
which was great. But also, I'm like, it's so well done. I did wonder. I'm like, did she just get this through candy? Which is yes. fine. It's fine. That's not against the rules. But also... No. <laughs> I, I had the same thought. I was like, this is either a very faithful recreation or you just took that outfit. And I, you know, it's not as impressive that way. And then she does another, you know, a denim corset plaid skirt, whatever. There's 95 of them. And I, I'm sure that one was fine. <laughs> yeah, it was after some of the looks we've seen in the ball, it was, this is another fine look. And unfortunately, the same with Plasma, who yeah. I wish she hadn't gone last because yeah. she she delivers three fine looks. It's just, you know, we've been so impressed and so distraught earlier. For her mother goose, she does Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Thankfully, it's a thing that exists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It, it was reading as like Halloween costume that didn't quite sit well on her. Yeah, it like I know what those costumes look like because you can buy them on Amazon, but like it it didn't like fit. It didn't read for me. For a significant mother, she was Anne Boleyn, which was pretty. Um, I I liked it. Yeah, it was a little like cool. I don't know it's, what's costumey yeah. anymore, but it, it yeah. Was cool. Yeah, it was like, it's great for the Renaissance Fair or wherever you're going, but, you know, it's not really a drag race look. And yeah. it's, unfortunately, it's the same for her maid look, which was, it's a black dress and it's fine. Like, it's not that it's badly constructed or anything. It's just, it's fine. Yeah, it, it, it's a nice dress. She looked nice. So when it comes to the tops and the bottoms, we have one last opportunity for people to rate. Uh, and the queens are rating the tops and the bottoms and then the judges critique and go from there. So as rated by the queens, the tops are Nymphia, Q, and Safira. I think from our critiques that we agree with that, right? Yeah, totally. And then the bottoms were Geneva, Hershey, and Maya, which, you know, there could have been a lot of bottoms uh, this week, but I, think, I don't yes. think those were wrong. I think they they rated about where they were supposed to. Nymphia does take the win, which of course, like after that, yeah. looking at that outfit, of course she won. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and ultimately, the final lip sync is Geneva versus Hershey Le Corgite, which is the first one to go home. And I so uh, Hershey, it's a shame that Hershey went home so so early, uh, but. I don't know, it's maybe you're the problem. Uh, it's the <laughs> of her. But, but no, Geneva was trying. Like, that's the thing. She was giving yeah. energy. She was, I feel like she's got more in the tank. We'll see, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Her, she seemed like she'd given up a little bit, which is sad to see because I really like her. But, um, you know, yeah. Geneva's going to run you over. So vroom, vroom. Yeah. I, I'm very excited for next week's episode. We're doing RDR Live again, which was like an interesting challenge uh, last time we saw it. Um, but more importantly, Sarah Michelle Geller is going to be our guest judge. So you know it's yes. going to slay. As a Buffy girly, I am like, I'm so thrilled. I can't wait. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this week's social call as we break down everything RuPaul's Drag Race. You know we're going to be back here watching and discussing with you next week. So until then, head over to popculture.com for the latest. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And we will see you next week.